Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you all having a wonderful time. Here we have updated version of the Warpath version of the Forge Guard minion build, which I now also managed to defeat the new pinnacle boss with, Abrad. I'll let the video go in the background of my first kill here, where we go over how the build works. So let's take it from the beginning here and the build is uh, quite easy to play and basically we're using Warpath but that's only going to be to spawn the Forge weapon which comes as minions and it's going to be our main source of damage with this build. And if you compare this version to the Multistrike one, uh, one of the great perks is obviously going to be that you can basically stay mobile all the time and still spawning those weapons. And as you might see in the Aberth video here, uh, it uh, can be quite uh, hectic sometime. And you can use the build not only to kill the bosses with, but also it can be quite fast to farm monolith with as well. Uh, so you can basically just spin all the way to the objective and uh, let the forge weapon kill everything for you. I've done some corruption over 300 and it works, but you will have to stay alert a little bit here. But uh, at the 200 to 250, it's uh, quite safe, I feel, and you can still be quite efficient while farming. And if you just like to relax and do some normal 100 corruptions, monos, you can do so as well. And if you swap out some items here, you can also go really fast with it. Perfect if you're farming for the new Nemesis, for example, and you can get around 100 increased movement speed while still spinning by simply using some items like Carcination of Momentum, one of the new rings for the Swiftness buff, Transcend Rest Boot with some extra movement speed LP on it, for example. And the Kestrel gives uh, movement speed on it. And we also have the Haste buff when you hit the enemy. And these are just some that I've been using myself. And there's more if you want to really mid-max your speed here. For some of the other skills we are using is uh, Manifest Armor. And this is another minion that we are using. And he will help out with clear with his spin attack. And this deal quite a bit of a nice chunk of damage now. After they buffed it. And they also have a chance to taunt enemies for us. And he basically takes the stats from our character's gear. And put it on himself. So you can make him quite strong. We're using Sigil of Hope to buff our minions with damage. And also giving ourselves some extra health regen and healing effectiveness. And these you want to press from time to time to keep up. And if you manage to time them right, you can have them all up at the same time and still be able to sustain your mana as you do cost a bit to cost. Lastly, Healing Hand is used as a travel skill and we also make Void and Undead enemies take extra damage if you manage to hit them with it. But this also makes us get some extra health regen for 4 seconds after we use this. And it's basically the only source that we get for recovering of our health. And it's super important I feel. Uh, as it also gives us immunity to damage while we are moving. So huge quality of life to have for some boss mechanics for example. Force Strike is the main skill that we want to have as well, as it will be the skill that also scales our Forge weapons. And you can also use Force Strike to spawn your minions as well if you hit the enemy with it. On normal enemies it has a 40% chance to spawn and on bosses and elites around 85. And this can be nice to use if you're starting out on new monoliths or so. And just hit a pack of enemy with it and get some weapons going before you start to use Warpath. And the Forge weapons also get the stats from our equipped weapon. So this is going to be super important that you have a good weapon on you. And the main stat that you really want to go for is going to be a base crit on it. And then maybe some crit multi attack speed and also flat added damage is really nice here. Apathy's more is a perfect example for this. And the base have a quite high flat damage. And we also get up to 120 extra flat void damage from this as well. And we also have some increased physical damage, minion physical damage, and also increased melee damage here as well. And uh, here you want to slam the base crit as a legendary potential. And basically this means that the base crit here will also be added to our forge weapons. And uh, I've been uh, trying out quite a bit of different weapons and there are quite a bit to choose from. Of course you can start with just a normal exalted item and uh, try to go for the stats that I just mentioned. The closest unique weapon that I've been trying out, uh, that's closest to the more, is going to be the Trident of the Lost Abyss. Here you get uh, some decent flat added damage, both uh, melee damage here and void. 
and then you also have the melee crit multiplier which really helps but if we take a look here i have 18 on my weapon here and then the forged weapons have a five percent base i think by default so they should now have a 23 percent in total and then we can also use one of the new rings added, Phantom's Grip, which gives tons of stats that we benefit from. But uh, here we get four extra minion critical strike chance with uh, this one, which will add up to a total of 27 of the base crit of the weapons. And uh, the last part of the ring is also really important here, which makes the stats on your gloves apply to your force weapons at uh, 64 to 100% effectiveness. And of course, you want to get both of these stats, the effectiveness and base crit as high as you can. And for gloves, you want to get as much crit chance on this and also melee attack speed. And uh, then you can go also with something like armor shred or frailty. But if you take a look on the crit part here, uh, you get uh, quite a bit. And I got a decent roll on my gloves here. But you could really mid-max this by also using a Solarum Bracer base instead. And this will give up to 40% extra crit chance. And also if you manage to get a T7 roll crit on the gloves, you can also get this up to 100. So in min-max here would be 140% increase to crit chance, which uh, then also applies to your forged weapons. And uh, this will really boost the crit chance numbers up by a ton. Let's just say we have 100 in total here on the gloves. And if we apply that to the 27% base, we're now up at 54% uh, crit chance uh, with these items alone for our weapons, which is quite insane. We do get some extra crit chance also from our amulet and we're using a death rattle here and the base gives a 35% minion crit chance. And then we also get the critical strike multiplier to minions on this amulet as well. And these are going to be the source of crit chance and technically you could go for another phantom grip if you like to. But I like to use a Torquinus ring base as it also provides crit strike multiplier for our minions. And we can also get some other stats that we need like health and resist for example. We're using a Lion Heart Helm for huge amounts of armor and also to the reduced bonus damage taken from critical strike chance. And also the Citadel boots which do the same making us basically take no crit strike damage. For the boots, I went and got the experimental mod to teleport uh, minions around us or use a traversal skill. Uh, this is not that you really need, but it do helps out a bit when you are doing monoliths with clear. So instead of having to wait for the force weapon to get to you uh, before the attack, you just save like half a second or so uh, each time you charge to an enemy pack. Code of Hill Race Sentinel is the last unique for this build and uh, from this we get the plus level to all Sentinel skills. We get some armor and also armor mitigation to damage over time and this can roll up to 30% and really helps out as we have so much armor on our character. Uh, currently we are a bit over 9k but for the rest of the stats on the relic here will be different for everyone. I got lucky to get all resist while channeling on this. But uh, you could also go and try to get just as much resist as you can here. Maybe some life and even chance to frailty might be good on this one as well. Champion regalia is uh, what you want for your body armor. Huge amount of armor and also the extra armor mitigation for damage over time. And here I also went with this mod, void damage taken as physical. And basically if you unaware how armor works, it's uh, reduced damage taken from hits. And then it's only going to be 70% effective against all non-physical damage. And uh, as the new pinnacle boss have a lot of void damage, this really helps out with that fight. And uh, you could even go with the same mod here on the helm as well if you want to. The Sentinel also have some great passives that we're using. Armor Claude from Sentinel Tree for less damage taken from nearby enemies. Iron Attunement gives us the damage over time mitigation from armor per attunement. And right now I think we are around 50 attunement or so, so that's uh, quite a bit of chunk just from that. Also attunement is scaling our minions as well, providing health and also damage, so great attribute to use. Liquid Iron is another one that gives less damage over time taken, and is also doubled if we use a potion recently. And then we have the Infinite Bulwark, and this is probably one of my new favorite ones to use. Uh, this gives us and our minions some armor on potion use. 
Uh, but then we also heal our minions for 100% of our armor. And as mentioned earlier, we currently add around 9k armor on this uh, character. And this will keep helping our minions ally, which is usually a big problem for most minion builds, as they can be quite squishy. And then we also have Shield Crafter, and this was something that I picked up. This will give our minions 200% minion health and also minion armor. And this uh, really makes them even more tankier. And uh, this also made it uh, possible for me on the Aberth fight, for example, here. That uh, basically made them survive the whole fight here. Before we go over the rest of the build, I just like to mention that uh, this is not fully optimized yet. And do have uh, quite a bit uh, of improvements that still can be made to really mid-max the build. But if we take some look on the stats here, uh, you want to go for health, resist, attunement. Then you can go for strength or vitality. Depending on how high your armor is, strength will give you armor, vitality, life. And then you also want to go for increased minion damage. And as mentioned earlier, uh, your weapon you are using is going to be scaling all of your forged weapon. So do try to focus on getting one with uh, the base crit. And then you can go for crit multi, attack speed or flat damage. And uh, just try to improve it from there. And for the idols, it's very simple for this character. You just want to grab as much health as you can here basically. You can also get these double health stout idols. And you can even go for some idols with resist on them as well, if you are missing out on that. And for the idols, starting with the Black Sun here, we went for the Void Resistant. And Reign of Dragon, we went for all resist. And then on End of Storm, we went for the Health Region. And on Age of Winter, you want to go for increased armor. And lastly, Spirit of Fire for the armor while channeling, huge for this build. And let's take a closer look on the skills that we are using. Starting with Warpath here, it's going to be the one that spawns our Forge weapons. Unchained and also Reckless Spin will reduce the mana cost of the skill. And I went with 4 points here and that's enough to sustain my mana. And then Forge Marshal stands, make it so we summon Forge weapons with uh, Warpath. And then moving forward, just make them so we spawn them more frequently. Quicksilver win, really important for the extra move speed here. And then just the last points in Juggernaut stance for some extra block chance. Next up, we have Forge Strike, and this is going to be the skill that scales our Forge weapons. Banner makes the Forge Strike has no cooldown, so we can spam it to spawn our minions. Light Forge will give some attack speed to the Forge weapons. We have Forged by Fire, this will give the Forged weapon a fire tag and also add base damage here. Fire damage, 40 by this. Then we have Mass Production here and this just gives a high chance to spawn the weapons. If you don't want to use Forged Strike to spawn weapons, you can just remove these three points here basically. And I would recommend you putting them in Engine of War instead. But that's only if you want to spawn them by using Warpath. Well Forged Weapon. Giving us uh, maximum forge weapons, really important, and also some uh, increase to the duration. And then Forge Marcher, just have a uh, small chance to make uh, the forge weapon spawn a axe instead, with some increased area and also damage. Lastly, have a strike, we get a damage multiplier here, and also some small chance to stun chance. City of Hope to buff ourselves and also our minions. We get the 3 added flat damage from this and some health regen per sigil. By picking up Decree of Flame we get the additional 3 flat fire damage here per sigil for both us and allies. And then we have Empowering Sigil here that's 25% damage per sigil. Also works for our allies. Then you want to pick Exigency for the instant cast. And this is just going to make it so we don't interrupt the warp path while we are spinning. Tetagram for one additional maximum sigil. Then I put the last point in Invigorate here. And this will just increase the healing effectiveness a bit per active sigil. Manifest Armor, another mini that we are using. And uh, stats granted by Body Armor, Helm, Gloves and Boots will apply to this minion. And then by picking up Titan Sword, you now also scale it from the weapon that we are using. Ready Spirit Steel for the damage multiplier. We have Force of Impact and this gives melee physical damage per 10 armor on our chest. Whirlwind for the spin attack and this was uh, quite uh, heavily boosted 
So we do deal quite a bit of damage now. War Stab, yes, we have a really small chance to taunt enemies. And then we have the rest of the points in Great Helm, Plate Mail, Iron Grasp and also Steel Greaves. And this will just uh, increase the effect of stats uh, from each of these respective gear pieces, basically. And then lastly, Healing Hand. And this will uh, be used as a travel skill and also heal us, which is going to be really important to have as it's... Uh, Quite hard to sustain health from other sources, I feel, while using Warpath. But this has worked great for me, at least. So by picking up Ryan's Chariot here, makes it a travel skill. And also Sun Shroud makes us immune while we are moving. And then we have Halted Scourge and also Turn Undead. And this will give a small damage boost, both to Undead by this one. And this one is boosting damage to Voided Enemies. Then we want to grab Purity of Thought and also Blessing Parish and this is for the reduced mana cost, making the skill free. Pray of the Fallen for some increased healing effectiveness and then the rest of the points in Vow of Restoration and this will boost the health per second and I feel that's more important than the actual heal itself. And here a quick preview of the passive skill tree. For more information about the build, I do recommend to go and check out the last Epoch build planner. And to the top of the build planner, you can also go to loot fitters, where you can find my ultimate loot fitter with a lot of options, depending on how strict you want it to be. Link for this will be in the description. So what do you think about the Warpath Forge Guard minion build? Have you tried it out or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And if you got any other questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!